European election, we've always been, for, for several years we've been part of the European Parliament, this is an election that's been happening every five years. Traditionally it's always had a very low turnout because people just weren't engaged. Like you can say the European Parliament and the MEPs did, didn't do a good enough job in actually engaging the electorate or telling them what they've been doing so people felt the need to kind of actually go out and vote. That's why the uh, Nigel Farage's and UKIPs always did well. I think the last European election they actually won that. But they won't, but they can't win any seats in the general election. So I kind of say something, but I think honestly this European election is so, so important. I think this is the election that we'll be telling our grandchildren about in the future, where we'll hopefully be saying this is when we actually stopped climate change dead in its track. This is when we actually took on the far right and kind of won. So also this is when we also stopped Brexit from happening as well. So I think it's such a very pivotal moment in time that we're living in. Because some people are treating this like a proxy for the referendum, and, but we need as many people out there to actually go out and vote and actually just use the vote because it is, it is a very important election. One of the reasons people are disengaged is the fact that because politicians, people can't engage with their politicians because there's that thing of people need to see themselves in you. When you've got politicians that are constantly lying or constantly not um, really representing people's views, actually engaging with them, people are naturally going to feel disillusioned. So like, what is the point? We need to give people a reason to vote. Do you, do you know, like, I like, would you, would you say people have got, I was going to ask you a question, but then I thought that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. So I, I, was, I was going to ask you a question. But it's like, people think the Lib Dems are a, a serious point, but yet we've got three times more MEPs than, than the Lib Dems. So in terms of like, we, we're very, very serious in every single thing that we do. Like, we had an absolutely amazing local election results all across the country, and Sheffield, Bradford, everywhere else. But we also just trying to, I, honestly, our policies are serious, and we, what we've always seen is that where the Greens lead, everyone else follows. You just need to look at this whole, like, people now submitting motions into actually saying the fact that we've got a climate emergency and we need to do something. Whereas with the Greens that took the lead on that, whether that be um, the um, minimum wage from £10 an hour that Labour pushed for, that was always been a Green Party policy. So a lot of times, it is Green, we've been serious all across the board. And I think our message is definitely starting to resonate with a lot of people and hopefully that will result into, result into votes in the European elections and hopefully further elections as well. Yeah, do you know what it's like? A lot of people voted to leave for lots of different reasons. A lot of rightful concerns that like people were People were saying, listen, like the NHS, like we have to wait ages in A&E, there's not enough school places, jobs. All of these are rightful serious concerns, but all of those aren't down to the EU or immigrants. They're down to failed government policy. So we had people like yeah, Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson's Nigel Farage that were literally scapegoat migrants and saying all the issues, oh no, it's, it's, it's basically migrants, which is complete BS and just not completely true. So I feel like we need to acknowledge there are some serious issues that people have got. That's down to our national government and the way for this whole austerity program that agenda they've been pushing us from. That has resulted in a lot of left behind communities and people wanted an alternative. People wanted change and they thought that they were going to get that change through Brexit. There is not a single Brexit deal that can actually deliver the promises that were told and given to people who voted to leave. So there's just the literally people promised unicorns. That's not going to basically happen at all, but it's like. Honestly, the only way past this deadlock is through a people's vote. We've clearly seen that our MPs can't get their act together and actually collectively put a, make a decision. And they keep changing their minds again and again and again. I think let's actually just point it back to the people and that's the best way to deal with it. But what do they vote for? But they, 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 when people vote to leave, but what sort of leave? You've got like, leave with a deal, hard deal, because well, like, none of these were discussed. Like it's what, and it's like you, you've got like one thing is for so you know what's united people, Every, just united the remainers and the leavers. Nobody wants the remainers deal, and that is the, and that is Brexit. So people don't want that Brexit. So what do people want? Like again, we don't know. So the only way literally is to put it in concrete what back, back to the people, because there's no other way past it. I can't genuinely see another way past it. Like. Of course, tomorrow the Lib Dem, tomorrow, Labour and 
Conservatives can get together and agree and they push it through, but nobody wants, the majority of MPs don't want that. One hundred percent. Nobody was talking about or discussing the Irish backstop or the last e referendum. Nobody was talking about so many issues. We're a lot more informed now than we were in two thousand sixteen, and I feel like a lot of people will have a lot more knowledge to actually base that on and actually vote whatever way. Yeah, definitely. Do you know what, like, you know what's the crazy fact? Out of 750 odd um, MEPs, there's only three black ones. Three, in the entire like, like three BME ones. In the entire like, that is completely shocking. So clearly, and it's not just, in, it's not even just in European Parliament. We look at local government, national government, European government. They don't reflect the people that they're there to represent. And that really needs to change. Of course, there needs to be more women. There needs to be more uh, like BME. People, there needs to be more disabled. There needs to, we need to literally have our leaders basically representing the people, that they, like, reflecting people that they represent. I think only through that can we really get an equality, equal society. Do you know, like, Immigrants make Britain great. I wear it. I wear it. My she's like my That's like exactly, yeah. my main campaign for this campaign. Is it really is just because like people like we need to change the language and the the way we speak about migrants. Like they enrich our every life in every aspect of our life. That be culturally, through food, whether that be for academics, for our public service. Our NHS would actually be failing had it not had the amazing immigrants who actually help and support that. Also even like economically, it's been proven that statistically immigrants are more of a gain than they are a drain to this economy. They actually support and bring so much. They come to the country and they create jobs, basically. And I think honestly, if I was to become an MEP, that would be like, especially the whole refugee crisis going all across Europe. And I would literally, if I, if I elected an MEP, I'd be a massive advocate in actually making sure that we are treating them as humans and with dignity and the fact that we're not shamed in inhumane ways and whatnot and literally just leading with compassion more than anything. Hi, apparently it's always great weather and it's sunshine all the time. <laughs> I've been told the weather's always like this yes. but I've got um, good good friends in Bradford so um, yeah big fan of Bradford. Yeah 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 I've been here quite a few times oh, definitely. Yeah. Literally like sometimes we've driven my friends that would just drove us here just to get some food in the evening and catch up with some other people. So it's been good. Do you know what? It's just, it is a bit tough if I'm being honest with you, but I guess just being busy kind of helps me not focus on food. Of course, I feel like at the time my energy levels are quite low, but I'm enjoying it. Part of the struggle, and it's like I'm learning a lot about myself, and yeah. yeah. Good, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for but, No, thank you so much, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Too.